Hi kids, I'm back with a fun new recipe. Um, if you hear any background noise, it's probably just the washer in the other room. Um, but we're gonna be making sand dollar sugar cookies. Shout out to my Aunt Peggy for letting me use her amazing sugar cookie recipe. It's the best one I've ever tried by far. Um, so we're gonna be doing that today. And let's go ahead and get started. So here's what you'll need. The recipe itself calls for a cup of melted butter, which is two six. So kids, you're definitely gonna need your parents' help for this recipe. Um, a cup of sugar, two eggs, a tablespoon of milk, and a teaspoon of vanilla, but we're out of vanilla here in the house. Uh, you'll also need three cups of flour and three teaspoons of baking powder. And I'll just pause on the recipe that I have here so you guys can see that. Uh, I also have my oven preheated to 350 and I've prepared a cookie sheet with parchment paper. For decorating you're going to need a little template of a sand dollar. We're just going to cut it out and use like the flower center and some toothpicks and we'll discuss why in a minute. So I gathered all my ingredients and I melted my butter and I let it come off the heat for a couple minutes. And so we're gonna mix our butter, sugar, eggs, milk, and if you had it, vanilla together. And we're gonna let that combine before we add the next stuff. So we'll be shooting this as we go. If it's a little bumpy, it's cause it's one handed. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with my butter. Give me one moment. And sugar. All right. I'm just gonna put that on low and let that combine. All right, so I have my butter and sugar combined. They uh, combine pretty easily um, because the butter is melted. I went from low to medium, and now I'm gonna add in my eggs and milk. Again, I'm gonna mix it at low, go to medium, and then once it's combined, we'll add in our other ingredients. Okay, so I have all of my wet ingredients combined. Um, you can't tell from the camera, but when you're mixing them together, they should look a little fluffy and pale by the time you're done mixing them. Um, and now it's time to go ahead and uh, mix our dried ingredients. So like I mentioned before, I have three cups of flour and three teaspoons of baking powder. I'm gonna put them together and mix them up before adding them in small increments to my batter. I'm just gonna pause one moment to get a fork. Okay, and I'm back. So I went ahead and mixed together my dry ingredients with my fork until I was sure that the um, baking powder was thoroughly mixed in. And now I'm gonna use a third cup measurement and slowly add it into my wet ingredients until my dough uh, you know, starts to form like a, a ball. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this until I've added in all my flour and I'll check back with you then. I just wanted to go ahead and show you, I have almost like half of the flour in there now. Occasionally you're gonna have to pause and scrape down the sides. I'm sure you guys know this, but just in case you didn't. All right, so I'm gonna add in the rest of my flour and then we'll go to the next step. Hi guys, so I finished adding in my flour. Just wanted to show you what it should look like by the time we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. So um, my aunt's recipe calls to chill for the dough for at least 10 minutes, but because I'm gonna be working with it a little bit, um, as you'll see in a moment to make the sand dollar effect, we're gonna put it in the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes um, to make it a little firmer, a little quicker. So that's what I recommend. If you're just making the normal recipe 10 minutes um, in the fridge or freezer should be good enough to just roll it out and cut it. So I'll chill it and then we'll come back to decorate. Hi guys, while I have my dough chilling, I was just thought I would give you a tip. 
Um, so as I was wrapping up my dough to put in the freezer, I realized that I put it into one big ball where I'd usually put it into a couple of smaller discs. So that's normally what I would recommend. I already was wrapping mine when I did it. So that just helps it um, to be a little more manageable when you take it out. So you can take it out in smaller batches, you know, makes it easier to do that. So you, after you finish rolling out like your first dozen, you can put that ball of dough back in the uh, freezer or fridge to take out the other one that's been firm and hard. So just a little tip for you guys when you're doing this with your parents. All right, so I still have 14 minutes on the clock. Um, for my dough to chill and once I take it out of the freezer we'll roll it out and make some sand dollars. And we're back. So while my dough was chilling I grabbed out a rolling pin, a cutting board that I covered with uh, plastic wrap or clean wrap and then another piece of parchment paper. I like to sandwich my dough in between like um, uh, plastic wrap or par parchment paper to make sure that it doesn't stick. Um, so parents, this is really makes it easier to roll out the dough without it sticking to the counter. You don't have to use a bunch of flour. Um, so we're going to go ahead and roll this out. I only grabbed out about half of my dough because I put it in one big ball like I was talking about before. But if I had broken it up into two or three discs, I would have just grabbed out one disc. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this out to my desired thickness. Um, like, obviously like less than an inch, half an inch, maybe... Um, quarter or an eighth of an inch I suppose. Uh, I don't really get that technical. I just roll it till it's thin enough that it'll bake quick but not too thick that it'll be like too chewy. All right so I'll roll that out and then we'll get to decorating. Oops I forgot to mention I had a little cup here so that way when I'm done rolling I can cut out my cookies. Okay so I rolled out some cookies and I cut them and I put the rest of my scrap dough back in the um, freezer to chill a little more so I can rework it. Um, this yeah. recipe, sorry for the background. All right, and we're back. Like I was saying, um, so I rolled out my dough and I cut it into shape and I put my scraps back in the freezer to chill. Um, now I've never really had a problem uh, re-rolling this multiple times. Um, you do want to be mindful of it. You don't want to roll it too much, but I've never really had an issue with that. Just so you parents know, you don't really have to worry about that too much. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start making it look like a sand dollar. So kids, this is really fun to do with your parents' help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this template and I'm just going to cut out the star shape in the middle. Um, the, the kind of holes or lines, whatever you want to call them, uh, surrounding the star should be really easy to make. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, cut this out, and then show you what to do next. Okay, so I've cut out my... Um my little star shape and I'm grabbing my toothpick and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by making the kind of surrounding lines around the star. So kids with mom and dad's help you're going to take a little toothpick and you're just going to start making kind of like a oval here. Then you're going to go to this side. You probably want like four or five. Doesn't really matter where you put them. If you look at pictures of real sand dollars, they're kind of all over the place. I think I'm going to go for six in this one. So you just take your toothpick, you rub it in circular motions, make a little oval. And that's most of your sand dollar right there. Really fun and easy. Now, like I was saying, for the center, um, we're not going to poke all the way through. We're going to kind of just trace this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to poke kind of deep in there but not all the way through. Just, it's like you're tracing a number or a letter. I'm just gonna keep poking. If you do poke all the way through, don't worry about it too much. It'll probably seal up in the oven. Right, just keep going around, gently poking. And why I poke is that way we don't um, tear the dough. All right, almost done. Now I just have to peel up my template with the toothpick. Parents, you might want to help for this part. And voila, we have our sand dollar. Now I'm just going to go back over it, make sure my line is really clear. And then I'll do it for my cookies and put them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. How long you put it in your oven depends on your oven. Um, like I know that my oven runs a little hot. 
So I'll start with 10 and then go from there. Uh, if you know that your temp that your oven has a hard time getting up to temperature, parents, you might want to start with 15 minutes. But it's really simple, and I'll come back when we have the finished product. By the way, what I forgot to mention before and would make this recipe a lot easier and probably a little more fun would be sliced almonds. That's what I had intended to use originally, but I realized that we didn't have any in my house. So what you would do is you would take the almonds and you would kind of put them into the shape here. It just looks like really like um, a flower or kind of like a star. So you just put um, five coming out from the center. And kids, that's really easy for you and your parents to do together. So if you have sliced almonds, I recommend that you do that. And then just um, make the holes here like we did in this version. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, all these cookies and then put them in the oven for, like I said, I'll start with 10 minutes and go from there until they're golden brown and uh, show you the finished product. By the way, before I put my cookies in the oven, I just took a spoon full of sugar and sprinkled it over my cookies. That's it, I'll let you know when they're done. All right, here it is, our finished result, a beautiful sand dollar sugar cookie. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys make it and enjoy it uh, with your family and your parents and siblings. Um, Keep having a great summer and I'll see you guys next time.